Tonight at 6. Good night. On World News Tonight this Thursday, terrorism and warfare at opposite ends of the Middle East. An American ship is attacked in Yemen. There are dead and wounded. This was an act of terrorism. It was a despicable and cowardly act. Israelis and Palestinians, another day of dead and wounded. Each side accuses the other of going to war. And the Middle East effect on Wall Street, the market is way down. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. It was broad daylight today when the USS Cole began to tie up in the port city of Aden in Yemen at the tip of the Arabian Peninsula. There have been some general warnings in the last few days about the possibility of terrorism in the region, but they're almost commonplace these days. The small boat with two men in it was apparently not seen as a threat. And tonight we know that five American sailors were killed, a dozen are unaccounted for, and 36 were wounded. We're going to start with ABC's John McCreffy, who has been following this all day at the Pentagon. John. Peter, Navy officials are saying tonight that this attack was so cleverly engineered that it may have been impossible to prevent. Not good news for the future. The USS Cole was just pulling into Aden's Harbor for fuel. The ship was only supposed to be there four or five hours. Its sailors had thrown out mooring lines. Eyewitnesses say one of the small boats that seemed to be routinely handling the lines came up next to the ship. The two men in the boat raised their arms as if to salute. Then it blew, ripping a huge hole in the side of the ship 40 feet across. The blast punched into the engine room just beneath the mess deck where a dozen sailors were having lunch. The explosion was so powerful that the floor of the mess deck was driven up through the ceiling. The most seriously injured men and women were taken to the small hospital in Aden. American medical teams were flown in from Bahrain. This is a sad day for America, for the Navy and for the families of the lost and the wounded sailors. Intelligence sources tell ABC News that six days ago, the U.S. received information that suspected terrorist leader Osama bin Laden had signaled one of his hit squads to move out. But there were no details on where it was headed. The U.S. issued a very general warning. American officials say they believe Yemen's port authority, or the contractor that provides fuel there, had been penetrated. The terrorists knew the ship was coming and were waiting. I have no reason to think that this was anything but a senseless act of terrorism. We will find out who was responsible and hold them accountable. If their intention was to deter us from our mission of promoting peace and security in the Middle East, they will fail utterly. The size of the blast, the precise planning required, and the deception of using a harbor boat caused many to immediately suspect Osama bin Laden, but others are being considered. The FBI has already dispatched local resources to the scene, and it is sending investigators, explosive experts, and an evidence response team. The U.S. has 15 ships in the Persian Gulf today monitoring sanctions against Iraq. The USS Cole, away from its home port of Norfolk since June, was on its way to the Gulf. As a precaution, Peter, tonight all American warships have been ordered to go to sea. All American citizens in the Middle East and in the Persian Gulf have been warned there could be more trouble. Thanks very much, John, at the Pentagon. And as John knows, the Navy is still going through the difficult process of contacting the families of the Cole's sailors. At the Norfolk Naval Base in Virginia, flags were lowered. The press was, understandably, not allowed on the base. You can imagine how the families are feeling. The immediate families of the dead and missing have already been notified. Yemen is a very poor country. When the Soviet Union was still intact, Yemen was the only communist Arab state. It has been beset by civil war and terrorism for years. It is both out of the way and close to many strategic locations in and around the Persian Gulf. It is a convenient place for men of violence. Here's ABC's Bill Redeker. In Yemen today, anti-Israeli demonstrations. Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad all maintain offices here. But it is the homegrown Yemeni group, the Islamic Army of Aden, which is of most concern. Financed by Osama bin Laden and commanded by his brother-in-law, the terrorist organization is believed to be responsible for three bombing attacks against U.S. troops in Yemen in 1992. 
Former CIA counterterrorism chief Vince Canestrero says the U.S. has every reason to once again suspect the group. It's Yemenis, indigenous Yemenis affiliated with the bin Laden organization that may have provided the support structure to facilitate this operation. Despite Yemen's ties to terrorism, the U.S. has recently enjoyed good relations. The Navy has refueled several times here in the last six months. And President Saleh, who visited the White House only this spring, has pledged to curb terrorism. But his government controls only the cities, and it is the lawless tribal regions of Yemen that provide the fertile ground for radical groups that may have been involved in today's attack. Bill Redeker, ABC News. As always, there's a lot to absorb and learn about this. There's quite a lot of information at our website, abcnews.com, about the investigation, the destroyer, the coal, Yemen, the country, and a history of terrorist activity in the region. When we come back this evening at the other end of the Middle East, the northern end, the violence that Israelis and Palestinians did to each other today. And it's been a very bad day on Wall Street, scared about oil and worried by Home Depot. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Brought to you by Flexigen. I never thought I'd be out here again. With my stiff joints, sometimes just getting out of bed was a challenge. Then I discovered new Flexigen for the makers of Advil. It's not a painkiller, but a daily dietary supplement. It has both glucosamine and chondroitin. They work together over time to help rebuild and lubricate worn cartilage in my joints. Now my only challenge is making the shot. Flexigen. Look for it in your store next to Advil. Introducing something totally new from Verizon Wireless. It's called New Every Two. We'll give you a new digital phone up to $100 value every two years for free when you sign up for a two-year agreement. So you'll always have the latest in wireless technology. It's never been easier to keep up with what's new. New Every Two, only from Verizon Wireless. Join in. I asked my doctor about Lipitor. Have you? Ask your doctor what Lipitor can do for you and call 1-888-LIPITOR or visit our website to learn more. It has been another terrible day of fighting between Israelis and Palestinians. There was a particularly ugly incident in the Palestinian city of Ramallah. 40,000 people live there. This week they're all angry at the Israelis. There was about to be another funeral. Thousands of young men had congregated. At least two Israeli army reservists were clearly in the wrong place. They were stopped and taken into a police station. That was not enough for their protection. Here's ABC's Gillian Finley. It all began today outside the main police station in Ramallah. As word spread that Israeli soldiers were inside, the crowd grew larger and angrier. Palestinian police tried to push the crowd back. Riot police were called in. But at no time did they open fire and soon the barricade was broken. The mob had taken over. As young Palestinians scaled the police building, ABC News producer Nasser Atta watched from the street below. We saw them through the window that they were stabbing the Israeli soldiers and then they carried his body and they throw him from the window. At that point, the crowd was out of control. There was little doubt that Israel would retaliate. As helicopter gunships hovered over Ramallah, the streets emptied. And then the attack began. Again and again, the Israelis fired, hitting not one, but two police stations, a radio and TV transmitter, and Yasser Arafat's presidential compound. Mr. Arafat was in meetings in his offices in Gaza. And soon, the Israelis were firing missiles near there, too. Not targeting the Palestinian leader, the Israeli army said, just sending him a message, stop the violence. This is the kind of day everyone here was fearing. Just 48 hours ago, Israel was acknowledging a reduction in Palestinian violence. 
This could make violence on both sides even worse. I'm not sure whether we are at war, but it's clear that we are in a violent confrontation with live fire and uh, use of uh, weapons that had been launched and initiated by the Palestinian Authority. As for Mr. Arafat, he visited Palestinians wounded in today's attacks and promised the fight for Jerusalem would continue. Late this afternoon, another angry crowd gathered outside the Ramallah police station, now missing its top two floors. What the Israelis did here today, they said, was a declaration of war. And Peter, there is late news tonight that Prime Minister Barak, in an effort to deal with this crisis, is turning to the opposition leader, Ariel Sharon, the right-wing opposition leader, asking him to join a government of national emergency. Now, what about the situation there tonight? Quiet or still fighting going on? No, there are still attacks, uh, Peter, in a number of cities. We've heard that in Jericho, a police school has been hit with eight missiles. Uh, this is not quieting down. Tensions are extremely high on both sides, and everybody is very worried about what tomorrow is going to bring. Now, one thing about tomorrow, the Egyptian president, Hosni Mubarak, has apparently asked people to come to Cairo for a summit. Is anybody accepted? Not as far as we know yet, Peter. Uh, Mr. Mubarak did put a condition on that and said that the Israelis must stop using force before that could happen. So far, it doesn't seem that that has happened. Thanks very much, Gillian Finley, in Jerusalem tonight. It surprises many Americans that Israelis and Palestinians can seem so close to agreeing about something, and then it falls so disastrously apart. But as the Israeli Prime Minister said today, life is more complicated than a television program. There are Israelis and Palestinians who do not want this peace plan to succeed, Yes, Arafat is vulnerable to those forces, and so is Prime Minister Barak. And there are always the television pictures to magnify that oversimplified view that some Israelis and some Palestinians have about the other side. Here's ABC's Jim Wooten. In the ashes of these explosive events, one more casualty, the peace process, and both sides blame each other. Now, we say to Arafat, it's up to you. You can stop it. Simple. Stop the incitement. Stop calling for more violence. There would be no more violence. Once it was on the table of negotiations, now it is through airplanes and through uh, bombing from the airplanes toward the Palestinians. I don't know what will be tomorrow. Enemy! 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 enemy. And while Israel. it might seem impossible, Palestinian rage has intensified now to an unprecedented level that puts any quick and peaceful resolution beyond reach. If this situation means anything, this young man said today, it means that we are heading for war. No nuance, no subtleties, just pure hatred. It's almost a given now that in every street of every Palestinian village, town and city, the hatred of Israel on one hand is matched by a long-standing enmity for America on the other. I, and I think Israel is the capital of America. These people blame the United States as much as Israel for today's attacks on Palestinians, and they will not soon change their minds. Nor will most Israelis soon forgive or forget the horror of what happened to their soldiers in Ramallah today. And so, as security measures were heightened across the country tonight, Jewish settlers in their enclaves in the Palestinian territories were warned to take to their bunkers again. This was last night in Hebron. Now this entire land is fearing even worse. Jim Wooten, ABC News, Naples. And as everybody in the region has said today, nobody knows what will happen tomorrow. Various Palestinian factions as well as Jewish settlers in the territories are calling for another day of rage. The turmoil in the Middle East was felt on Wall Street. It was a rough day for that and for other reasons when we come back. Chevy Monte Carlo SS. Uh, hot. The side you show the world is up to you. Monte Carlo will be there. Who says you can't share secrets with your grandson for years and years? Who says you can't watch the waves break for many summers to come? Provacol says you can fight back against heart attack. 
If you have high cholesterol or heart disease and diet and exercise still aren't enough, adding Provacol can make a difference. Other drugs lower cholesterol, but Provacol is the only drug of its kind that's also proven to help prevent both first and second heart attacks so you can live a longer, healthier life. Talk to your doctor about Provacol today. Provacol, a prescription drug, isn't for everyone, including people with liver problems or women who are pregnant, nursing, or may become pregnant. And because serious side effects can result, tell your doctor about any muscle pain or weakness you experience while on Provacol. Your doctor may do blood tests to check for liver problems. Tell your doctor about any medicines you are taking. Who says you can't spend a lifetime with your first love? Provacol. It's your life. Fight for it. You're an investor. Would a cell phone company push your buttons? Janice dove into their books, questioned their projections, called up their customers, even tracked down the company that sells them their microchips to make sure there were no kinks in their supply line. That's how Janice decides if a stock is a smart call. Don't put your money on hold. Get there. Janice Mutual Funds. As the violence rages on here, the search for answers continues here. The very latest from Israel, Yemen, and Washington. Good morning, America, tomorrow. One thing is always completely clear about instability in the Middle East. American consumers will understand it. It has an effect on the price of oil. Oil prices were up $3 a barrel today. And that affected the stock market. ABC's Betsy Stark is at the New York Stock Exchange. Betsy, tell us first about the oil effect. Well, Peter, as you said, there was a big spike in the price of oil today. Crude prices are up $5 just this week. The Middle East is the key oil-producing region of the world, and the fear is if the tensions persist, if the crisis escalates, oil prices could go even higher. Maybe there could be supply disruptions. We've already got very tight supplies of oil and home heating oil heading into this winter. But, the, but so, there is more, and, and for the folks at home, here's what the Dow Jones was looking at today. 379 points down. And the Nasdaq down more than 93 points. And there is more, Betsy, is there not? What about Home Depot? Peter, today Home Depot came out and said it would not meet its third quarter profit expectations. The problem is Home Depot is one of the biggest and best retailers around. That sent its price, stock price down 30 percent, took other retailers down with it. It's now the latest in a long list of marquee companies to say slower profits are ahead. You put that together with the uh, oil price situation and you had a powerful catalyst for a sell-off. Anticipation about tomorrow? always nervousness with all of this going on. The market hates uncertainty. Many thanks. Betsy Stark at the New York Exchange tonight, the effect of oil and Home Depot. When we come back, presidential politics, another day of post-debate clarifications. Six weeks before one of the biggest games of my life, I felt a strange pain in my chest. What my doctor found was my toughest opponent yet. Three of my arteries were more than 90% blocked. After recovering from surgery, lowering my high cholesterol became more important than football. Later, I was fortunate enough to coach my team in the biggest game of the season. That's the kind of play we need. Along with a healthy diet and regular exercise, taking Zocor every day helped significantly lower my total cholesterol. Zocor is a prescription medication and is not right for everyone, including women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant, or people with liver problems. Your doctor may do blood tests to check for liver problems. Because serious side effects can result, tell your doctor about any muscle pain or weakness you experience while on Zocor and about any medicines you are taking. When diet and exercise are not enough, talk to your doctor about Zocor. Take care of yourself. It's your future. Be there. Sometimes you have trouble sleeping because you can't stop thinking about the tensions of the day. Try new Aluna Sleep. It's not a drug. Aluna promotes a natural sleep pattern in just a few nights. New Aluna. It doesn't make you sleep. It lets you sleep. When does the number zero mean more than just zero? How about when it's zero down, plus zero payments, and zero interest for one year for qualified buyers on the incredibly fun-to-drive Alera? That's zero to pay for one whole year on every new 2000 and 2001 Alero. So see your local Oldsmobile dealer today before these zeros disappear. Limitations apply. Call 1-888-255-ALT for details. What will I be like? 
A year from now, how much will I grow? How strong will I be? In five years? In ten years? Where does my future start? You'd be surprised. We learn today that President Clinton may visit North Korea before he leaves office. He would be the first U.S. president to go there. He was very busy about the Middle East today. No bait date has been set for his North Korean trip, but the possibility was raised after two days of unprecedented talks between administration officials, which included the president, of course, and a very senior North Korean official who has just visited. In future presidential politics today, both Mr. Gore and Mr. Bush were very much aware of what is happening in the Middle East. And they were also dealing with the impact of last night's debate. Mr. Gore was in the battleground state of Wisconsin. ABC's Terry Moran covers the Gore campaign. At a rally in Milwaukee, the vice president quieted the crowd, asking for a moment of silence and prayer for the casualties aboard the coal, and he issued a warning to the presumed attackers. Whoever is responsible for something like this will be met with a full and forceful and effective retaliatory response from the United States of America. Then it was back to politics and back on the attack on Governor Bush's record in Texas. I believe that his record in Texas gives us an important window onto what his priorities are. But the Gore campaign was also playing defense today on both the candidate's unusually subdued performance in last night's debate and on this remark in his closing statement. I want to give new choices to parents to send their kids to college with a $10,000 tax deduction for college tuition per child per year. Today, the campaign said Gore misspoke since his plan actually calls for a deduction not per child, but per family per year. The misstatement was another stumble in what has become a campaign struggling to regain its stride. Terry Moran, ABC News, with the Gore campaign in Milwaukee. Now to the Bush campaign. The many so-called snap polls conducted just after the debate last night found that more viewers favored Mr. Bush than Mr. Gore, though sometimes people's impressions change after a lot of media coverage. Today, Mr. Bush said that he supported what President Clinton was trying to do in the Middle East. Here's ABC's Dean Reynolds. Today in Pennsylvania, the governor called for a moment of silence for the U.S. sailors who died off Yemen. May God bless them and their families. In North Carolina, he offered support for the administration's handling of the crisis in the Middle East. I appreciate the administration's efforts to bring calm to that troubled part of the world. That's in keeping with Bush's stated desire not to play politics with foreign policy, a position that draws little fire. But domestic issues are something else. Pressed last night on why he did not fight to expand the Texas hate crimes law after the racially motivated slaying of James Byrd, Bush said this. The three men who, uh, who uh, murdered James Byrd, guess what's going to happen to them? They're going to be put to death. It turns out only two were sentenced to death, the other to life in prison. The Gore campaign argued that Bush's comments may have tainted the men's appeals. And when asked to explain why he fought the expansion of health insurance to poor children, or why Texas as a state ranks near the bottom in coverage for all its citizens, he said this. You can quote all the numbers you want, but I'm telling you, we care about our people in Texas. It turns out Gore's numbers came from the Census Bureau. Still, Bush campaign officials today are jubilant, believing the debates have been great for their man. As one of them put it, when the American people saw Governor Bush last night, they saw the next president. Dean Reynolds, ABC News, with the Bush campaign in Langhorne, Pennsylvania. In other news today, in Los Angeles, the 42,000 striking county workers are back on the job. A Catholic cardinal had appealed for the union to return to work and spend more time negotiating. Union leaders said they could strike again at any time if an agreement is not reached about pay. And the Safeway grocery store chain has pulled two brands of taco shells from its shelves after tests show they might contain genetically altered corn that is only permitted in animal feed. Safeway says its supplier had promised that the tacos did not contain the corn. We'll be back in a moment with the latest news from Yemen and the Palestinian territories.
I've got a client, a single woman who's 59 years old. She planned to retire at 62. I figured out that with a combination of annuities, she could do it three years sooner. To give somebody an extra three years of freedom to do whatever they want, that's a great feeling. You're in good hands with Allstate. Mine. Is that kid stacking total in the dairy case? That he is, sir. Son, the cereal aisle is over there. Yeah, but now this is where total deserves to be. It's the only food with 100% of the daily value of calcium. Give me a hand. 100% calcium, huh? That's like down in three glasses of milk at once. Ooh. We gotta talk. You bet. Hey, are you getting enough calcium? Because most adults aren't. Total. Now with 100% calcium. Attention shoppers. Total is now in the dairy case. Tonight, someday, this father will have to tell his newborn son the story of his heartbreaking birth and why he had to grow up without his mother. A crime so cruel, it's hard to understand. Their story exclusively on the premiere of Primetime, tonight. Tomorrow, as the search for missing American sailors continues, stay with ABC News for breaking developments in the Persian Gulf crisis. And watch World News Tonight. Just before we leave this evening, a brief review of the warfare in the Middle East today. The destroyer USS Cole was just about to refuel in Yemen when one of the small boats that seemed to be helping it with its mooring lines pulled up next to the ship. Two men in the boat raised their hands and there was a powerful explosion. You can see the effect of 40-foot hole in the ship. Five sailors are dead, 36 injured, and a dozen are still missing. And Israelis and Palestinians, each side accused the other of conducting a war today. Two Israeli soldiers were killed by Palestinians. They'd been caught in Palestinian territory and taken into a police station. The police were overwhelmed by a mob. At least one Israeli was dumped out of a window, alive or dead at the time. We do not know. The Israelis then launched an attack on the town of Ramallah and also in Palestinian Gaza. Among the targets, a radio station and President Arafat's compound. The Middle East had an effect on Wall Street. Oil prices down, related stocks down market really took a tumble today. There were also reports that Home Depot is going to report lower than anticipated profits tomorrow. Dow down 379 points, the Nasdaq down 93. That is our report on World News Tonight. Later on Nightline, more on the violence in Yemen and between Israelis and Palestinians. I'm Peter Dennings. Good night. This has been a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source. Last season ended with this burning question lingering in the air. Hey, 